What's up today? Let's talk about derivatives. Let's talk about derivatives today. Let's talk about them tomorrow. Heck, let's talk about them for a whole semester. Let's. We will be talking about derivatives, differential, differential calculus, about all semester. So to say that the concept of derivatives is a little bit important would be a huge understatement. Tremendously important. Hey, what the heck is a derivative? What is a derivative? Yes, you are correct. The slope of the tangent line to a function. We talked about that yesterday. The slope of a tangent line to a function is, yes indeed, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, defined to be the derivative of that function. Interesting. Yes, it is. So what do you got here? The notation for the derivative. Well, we already know some of the notation for the derivative because we know the notation for the slope of the tangent line. We talked about that yesterday or in the, whenever you watched that last video. We talked about the notation for the slope of the tangent line. And the notation for the slope of the tangent line was dy over dx. So we need some other notation. Well, we're going to use another notation for the derivative. And we're going to call this derivative, we're going to denote the derivative f prime of x. So dy dx for a certain function is simply, we're going to call it f prime of x. f prime of x. This is the notation for the derivative right there. Okay? Do not forget, ladies and gentlemen, that the derivative, and you're gonna, I'm going to ask you this over and over and over, the geometric representation of the derivative is simply the slope of the tangent line. I'm going to ask you later right that. I'm going to say, hey, give me the geometric interpretation of the derivative. And you're going to say, oh, I don't know, I don't know. What is the geometric, the graphical representation of the derivative? It is nothing more, nothing less than the slope of the tangent line to a function. And what do we know about slopes? We know that slopes are rates of change. Rates of change. Let me draw your attention to this handout that I gave you that you should have. It should at least be on my big campus or it should be in front of you now or the substitute teacher, hopefully it's Mr. Andy Gluba, maybe he gave it to you, I don't know, but let's look at it, it's right here. I'm going to, right here it is, 2.1, 2.2 notes, these were notes that I had written up or typed up, ladies and gentlemen, from a business calculus class that I used to teach for IU, but still good, okay, so what do we have right here, well, can we zoom in on that a little bit, I think we can, okay, what do we have right here, ladies and gentlemen, what we have, whoa, going up a little bit, slow down. The definition of tangent line to a graph of a line that touches the graph at a small enough interval, that's a tangent line. Recall a secant line touches the graph at two spots. Let me decrease that a little bit. So, okay, I think you can see that. Okay, we know this. We talked about this uh, definition yesterday or in the prior video. And now we're talking about the derivative of a function is simply the slope of the tangent line at any given point. The derivative of a function is simply the slope of the tangent line at any given point. The derivative of that function is the slope of the tangent line at any given point. Yes, at any given point. At a, any given point. And next week, whenever you're watching this, we're going to be talking about, hey, when is that slope defined? When can that slope be defined? When can that slope be not defined? And we'll be talking about that, which is also a big concept. So, okay, so let's look at this graph below. So what I want you to do is determine if the derivative of the function at the point where the tangent line touches is positive, negative, zero, or if it even exists, i.e. simply determine the slopes of these tangent lines, determine if the slopes of these tangent lines are positive, negative, zero, or if the slope indeed exists. What we're going to do is play the stick man game. Hey, we can look at it right here. Where do I have a rule? I have a rule right here. Wake up right there. And what I want to do, I'm going to look at point A. Is the derivative positive, negative, zero, or does it exist? Well, at A, you're going to do a tangent line right there. The slope of that tangent line, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, positive. What about at B? Oh, 
the slope of that tangent line is zero, approximately zero. Keep in mind, this is some function y equals f of x. Hey, let's look at c right there. c, is that positive? Negative, zero, it's negative, it's not. It is negative. But what about this guy right here? Let's go to d. Still negative. Still negative. Oh, but this is something else that we're going to be talking about. More or less negative. Or more or less positive. And tell me, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is negative. Who's the bigger negative? Who's more negative? That line or that line? That line or that line? Can you see here? Can you see there? Can you see here? That line is more negative. So f prime of d is going to be less than f prime of c. You're going to have a homework problem. It's going to ask you, oh, who's bigger? Line them up in increasing order. Okay? Hey, what about e? Bam! Another zero right there. What about f? Positive, yes. Gee, you get the idea, do you not? Hey, look at this guy right here at h. These are hard. This is almost not even a function there because it looks like there might be two function values at h. Hard to sketch, but if I look at this right here. Oh, what's the slope of a vertical line? The slope of a vertical line, that's when the slope does not exist. And that's one of the ways that the derivative does not exist at a spot where the graph has a vertical tangent line. And we're gonna, I'm going to expect you to wrap your head around this in one day. Like I said, we're going to be talking about differential calculus all semester. So we've got to start somewhere. We're starting here. Okay? And then again, at i is about zero, t is positive. Okay? So let's look, take this notes, this, and look at some more notation that I have here. Uh, 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 look at this guy right here. The derivative of the function is also called the instantaneous rate of change of the function at any given point. I.e., the derivative of a function is the same, the derivative of a function is the same as the instantaneous rate of change of the function. The derivative of a function is also the slope of the tangent line, or the instantaneous rate of change. This rate of change is very, very, very important. The derivative is a rate. It is a rate. The slope is a rate. It's a rate over y over x. It's a rate of y over x. Rate of change over y over change x. It be like I talked about yesterday. Okay, but it's an instantaneous rate for this. We call it the derivative is instantaneous rate of the function. And these words are cumbersome, 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 so we come up with this notation. Okay, and f prime of a, a is just an arbitrary x value, is what a is. I could have used x there, but we'll talk about a as an arbitrary, some value on that x axis up here. Well, what is f prime of a? f prime of a simply means, hey, you're going so fast. So pause the video. Put your phone away. Stop texting. And no, no, you're not. You're not calling your mom or texting your mom. That, oh, this is I want to get. Oh, this is I did. Just put your phone away. Stop texting. Okay. You too. I saw you texting back there too. You didn't think I did, but I did. Stop texting. Put your daggone phones away. Put them in the daggone phone bag. About half up the ear with the daggone phone bag. Okay. So what is f prime of a? Pause the video if you have to. I want to catch up. F prime of a simply means a derivative of the function at x equals a. Hey, it could also, it, it means f prime of a is the slope of the tangent line to f at a. Slope of the tangent line to f at a. Slope of the tangent. Or it could mean the instantaneous rate of change in f at a. The instantaneous rate of change in f at a. Well, what else it means? It also means the slope of the graph. Oh, oh, that's a totally new concept because before, the things that we, in pre-calculus mathematics, the only thing that had slopes were lines. Lines were the only things that had slopes. Well, now all these curves can have slopes, and they do. And the slope is defined, the slope of that curve is defined to be the slope of the tangent line. But we can also actually call it the slope of the graph at x equals a. These are all terms that I'm going to be asking you time and time and time again throughout the course. You need to know them. This is a very important note sheet. Very important video. 
Okay? The following is big. Let's see what this last thing is here. No, uh, recall the average rate of change of a function from x equals a to x equals b was the slope of the secant line to the points a, f of a, b, f of b. Well, we can estimate f prime. We can ask, and we did this yesterday. We estimated f prime of a with, uh, with the slope of some points really close to a, f of a. And we did that yesterday with a couple functions. We went from, from forward, I think, to 4.001 and, and so forth. And we did that. And that's exactly what this is talking about. And we have this notation, this is a review from yesterday, delta y over delta x stands for the slope of the secant line, and now we have dy dx stands for the slope of the tangent line, and now we know dy dx is also equal to, at x equals a is equal to f prime of a. So read these notes, wanted to go through them, you have them either, you should print them out, put them in your little folder right there, and let's go back to the thingamajig. To the expire. Okay, so where are we right here? So we know this This is big right here. Slope of tangents, rate of change, blah, 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 blah. Let's go to the next slide, okay? Okay, so guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Guess what? Guess what? You were finding derivatives last year. How are you feeling today? Feeling okay? How about last year? Feeling okay last year? Good. Because last year, we were actually finding derivatives. I didn't call them derivatives because I didn't want you to get all bogged down in your mind. Oh, we're doing derivatives. We're doing derivatives. You weren't. But I did a really simple calculus topic all last year when we were not all last year, but when last year when we did related functions. Remember we talked about, hey, we did that at the beginning of the this, this school year. I, I gave you three link sheets that we had done last year about related functions. Why did I do them this year, at the beginning of this year? Because guess what? The related function to a polynomial is also the derivative of that polynomial. Oh, whoa, yes. We were finding derivatives last year. We were talking about properties of the derivative of a polynomial last year. When we did that at the beginning of this year, when we did all those link sheets with related functions, we were actually saying those are derivatives, derivatives of polynomials. What? Yes, you're right. Absolutely right. Well, then you can analytically... I mean, yesterday we did our cal we used our calculator to find some specific slopes of tangent lines, specific derivatives at a particular x value. And we did that. We found dy dx. We did second calculate six. Bam, bam. Woo! Ah, three. Remember that? That one polynomial. That one derivative of that polynomial at four was three. Yes, we did do that. Well, now we have that. Was we did that with our graphing calculator. Now we have an analytical way to find the derivative anywhere because we know how to find the related function to a polynomial. One of the things we'll discuss down the road is how to find the derivative of things other than polynomials. But right now, we know if that's a polynomial, and it is, we can find the related function really easy. Bam, we did that. Everybody did that. Everybody, everybody could find these related functions really easy. We did. Bam, 3x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 5x minus 1. 4 times 3 is 12, subtract 1, 12x cubed, 2 times 2 is 4, subtract 1 is 1, just 5, and that's the related function to this polynomial. Well, guess what else? That's also f prime of x. f prime of x. This is the derivative of that. Derivative of that. The derivative of that. Yeah. This is the derivative of this polynomial. Okay? So what else can we do? Hey, guess what? We can use this derivative to find the slope of the tangent line analytically to that polynomial anywhere. Now, anywhere we want. So the slope of the tangent line to this function, so let's find the slope of the tangent line to this function at x equals 1 without our calculator. You can verify it with your calculator if you like, but we don't need to now because we have this analytical way to do this, this algebraic way. Well, we know what the derivative is right there. All we need to do, we need to come up with a notation. Notation is if you just write it down, you need to use the notation. f prime of 1 is equal to dy dx at x equals 1. And what is f prime of 1? What is dy dx at x equals 1? Bam! 1 cubed is 1, 12 minus 4 is 8, plus 5 is 13. 13. 
13, right there it is. Okay? Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Units of F prime. The units of F prime. The units of F prime. The units of F prime are big, are important. They're big, huge. You need to be able to determine the units. Recall that F prime is the slope of the tangent line. Recall a slope is a change in y or change in x, right? Or the change in vertical or the change in horizontal. Because down the road, our vertical is going to be other things, things other than y, and our horizontal is going to be things other than x. But the, the units of the derivative are always going to be the units of the vertical divided by the units of the horizontal. Change in y or change in x because we know it's a slope. Pause. Think. Okay, if you need to pause about that again, because that's important. So dy dx, and then we know that it's a slope, change so f prime, change of y or change of x. Here's an example. Here I have this function right here. Y is miles. X is out, t is hours, pardon me, t is hours. And y, f of t, miles, f, this is a miles function, a distance function. We're going to talk about distance functions a lot. This is a distance function. And what are the units of that? What are the units of, I want to know the units of f prime of t. What are the units of f prime of t? What are the units? Well, it's a change in y over the change in x, or the change in vertical over the change in horizontal. Ah, yes, you're correct. The units of that guy right there are going to be miles per hour. The change in y is going to be miles. The change in x, or in this case t, sorry, the change in t is going to be hours. So the units of f prime of x, and I shouldn't call this f prime of x. Oh, there's a typo here. So this is a function of t, a function of t. This should be, ah, this should be f prime of t, sorry. F prime of t is miles per hour. Miles, yeah, oh, miles per hour. What do we call that when I'm out there driving my little scooter around? When you're driving your little scooter, you're riding your little bicycles. You guys don't drive, do you? I hope you don't. But if you are driving illegally, what do you got? You're driving, no, I'm just joking about that. But I got you, didn't I? Hey, you know, you're going to get it. Shut up. So now, I, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. So I, I take that back. So miles per hour, what is miles per hour? It's a rank. It's the most common rate. It's the most common rate that we deal with. But in, in our world, you have no idea how applicable calculus is. Why? Because everything changes in some, some, with, some, with respect to some rate. We can talk about everything in terms of rate. The rate that the tree grows. The rate the grass grows. The rate that somebody gets a job done. So our life, our the rate, the rate that it takes to uh, propel some piece of metal out of our orbit. Rate, rate, rates are very important. So let's do another example here. Units are a must in interpreting, interpreting or, or discussing application problems of the derivative. They're a must. Without the without the units. You're going to interpret the derivatives incorrectly. And we're going to be doing a lot of writing and a lot of interpreting in this class, discussing what the heck derivatives mean. So here's another example. Here I have the vertical as pounds of leaves. This represents pounds of leaves. Pounds of leaves. The horizontal is going to be days. Okay, so each day looks like I'm adding leaves to the pile, I'm adding leaves. And what's happening from here to here? The amount of leaves, what is happening from, from about there to there? What's happening to the amount of leaves? Well, the amount of leaves is decreasing, is it not? Yes. And here, the amount of leaves is increasing again. But I want to talk about what is important. We'll talk about the units of f prime of x this time. Why do you keep making that mistake? Why do you keep making that mistake? Because you're trying to hurry through these videos. I'm trying to do this. Today, right now, is July 5th. No, pardon me, it's July 9th. 
July, July 9th. Uh, for me, well, for you, it's, I don't know what day it is. It's some August, some day in August. But and I'm trying to hurry to get these videos done before I go into the 9th, blah, 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 blah. Oh, uh, enough of that. But that's why I'm making mistakes, and I apologize. So I want to know the units of that prime of t. And then I'm going to give you an example to interpret the units. Okay. Well, the units of the derivative are the units of the vertical divided by the units of the horizontal. Think about that. Think, and if you can't wrap your head around what that means, just, just wrap your head around the units of the vertical divided by the units of the horizontal. And here I have the vertical represents pounds of leaves, the horizontal is days. So what's going to be f prime, the units of f prime? You're absolutely right, the units of f prime are going to be pounds of leaves per day. That's the rate. That's the rate of f prime. That's the rate. That's the rate of f. Pounds of leaves per day. Pounds of leaves per day. So hey, let's interpret the statement f prime of 3 is equal to negative 0.37. Well, first of all, now you can determine where day 3 is with respect to the graph. Notice I don't have the graph labeled. You can Step number 1 is determine where 3 is on the horizontal because this is going to be a day. And then interpret what the negative 0.37 means. Think about that. Pause the video. Okay, now you're back. You thought about that. You need to think about that. Discuss it amongst you. Hope you discuss it amongst your table partner. Because what, what, what does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? You're going to be doing a lot of that. You're going to have homework problems. You're going to be doing this all year long. All year long. Heavens to Betsy. So what does that mean? Well, let's look at this. So, the first thing you want to do is put the units, okay? And this is going to be pounds, and we don't want to forget this, pounds of leaves per day. So f prime of 3, the units, which is equal to negative 0.37, is pounds of leaves per day. And that rate is negative. That rate is negative. f prime of 3 is negative 0.37. So what that means says that at day 3, the amount of leaves, the amount of leaves in pounds is decreasing at a rate of 0.37 pounds of leaves per day. It's not decreasing at a negative rate. Decreasing at a negative rate would mean that it's increasing and that's, that's improper grammar. So this, this means the interpretation of that statement. The amount of leaves is decreasing at a rate of 0.37 pounds of leaves per day. We're going to be doing lots of this. So, to, so just relax, calm, relax. And look, where would 3 have to be? The derivative, keep in mind the slope of the tangent line. Where is the slope? And if I have, this is negative, the slope of the tangent line is going to have, it's going to, have to be negative somewhere. Oh, 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 oh. So 3 is going to have to be somewhere between here and here. And if somewhere is pretty low, it's probably right there, about right there, about day 3. The leaves are decomposing, decreasing. We're going to be doing lots of this, ladies and gentlemen. One thing that we are going to do, you know, if the derivative is, if the derivative of the slope of the tangent line is positive, just like on the related function, the graph is going to be increasing. Same way, the slope of the tangent is negative, it's going to be decreasing. That's a lot for one time. It's a lot for one video, but that's okay. We've got some homework problems on interpretation, on determining values, who's bigger, who's bigger, f prime of 3, f prime of 4. So work on those guys. I'll be back pretty soon. And we're going to be talking about this further. So. Chill. I'll see you soon. Let's get down on our bad self.